Hello everyone, welcome you all. In the today's video, we are going to learn array list in Java collections. So in our previous videos, we have seen like uh, what is collection interface and which is considered as a root interface. And uh, from this interface, there are other uh, child interfaces are derived. So among them, list is uh, one of the child interface and uh, set is another child interface and queue is another child interface. So these are the different interfaces are derived from the collection. Now, today we are going to mainly focus on the list interface. So again, list interface is implemented uh, by array list class. So array list is a one of the class which is implemented all methods from the list interface. So whatever the rules are applicable for list interface, so the same thing is applicable for array list. So normally when you we go for list, so when you we, uh, prefer to use a list interface. So we have discussed like suppose if you want to store uh, duplicate elements and uh, where insertion order is preserved, then we can go for the list interface. So here array list is also having the same kind of behavior. So when I create an array list where we can maintain the duplicate elements, it allowed us to store the duplicate elements or duplicate objects. At the same time, the insertion order is also preserved. So this is a array list. Now let us uh, discuss more about the array list class. So as I said, array list is a, a class which is implemented all methods which are derived inside the uh, list interface. Now when I say array list, so how to declare an array list object? So when I say array list, so array list is basically a class which is present under java.util package. So in this package, this class is present. So array list and say a reference variable equal to new array list. So this is the way we have to declare the uh, array list. So here AL is a array list reference variable. So when I declare array list like this, so how it is going to create internally? So which will create multiple locations like this. And uh, here we can store all the elements or different objects. So this is a basically called as array list. So every location is identified by using index, let's say 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 and so on. So index will always start from 0. So in these locations, we can insert some, we can add more elements, we can insert some elements like this, elements or objects. So by default, when I create an array list like this, so the default number of locations will be allocated or 10. So 10 is a default uh, locations allocated. And as soon as we added a new elements or we are removing elements or inserting a new elements, automatically this size will be growable. So that's the reason the array list is a growable object. So growable. So this is a main feature we have. So earlier we have discussed all collections are having growable miniature. At the runtime, based upon the values, automatically it will grow. So array list is basically growable. That means as many, yeah, as many as objects we are adding into the array list, the size keep on increasing. The default locations are provided in array list is 10 locations by default will be provided. So now in the array list, we can store a group of elements as a one single entity where uh, insertion order will be preserved and duplicates objects also allowed. Suppose if I store one element like X, the same thing will be uh, duplicated again and same value or same object can be repeated multiple times. So because array list will accept duplicate elements or duplicate objects. Similarly, insertion order is also preserved. So in whichever way we have inserted in the same way, the elements will be maintained. So insertion order is also preserved in the array list. So these are the two important behaviors from array list. So duplicates are allowed, insertion order is also preserved. So to perform different operations on the array list, so array list class is implemented a number of methods. Now we are going to see what are those methods are available inside the array list. Now we'll discuss the functionality, what exactly the methods will do. And then I'll show you one practically how we can use those methods. So in the array list, which contains a number of methods which are already implemented and those methods are derived from the list interface because array list is a class which is implemented from a parent interface, which is a list interface. So there are many ways to, de de to declare the array list. So for example, I want to define, uh, I want to declare uh, an object of array list. I can declare like this. So I can say array list, right? Array list and AL. So this is my object difference equal to, I can say new array list. So this is a basic uh, declaration. So by default, uh, the array list object will be created with the default constructor. And this is a one definition. So when I say array list uh, object, so one thing is one more important and collections, heterogeneous data also possible to store, right? 
So array list also accept heterogeneous data. So we can store different type of objects, different type of data elements. So array list AL equal to new array list. Suppose uh, if I create array list like this, which will allow us to store any kind of data, any kind of object. That means it will accept heterogeneous data elements. Suppose if I want to store the same data type of objects or same data type of element, still we can restrict that. So for example, let us say like this array list array list al equal to new array list right? this is a normal definition right so we can create an object like this suppose i want to restrict this array list with the same kind of objects or same kind of data elements then what i have to do is we have to specify something here before declaring the variable the type we should specify suppose i want to store only strings in this array list i can define the of wrapper class like this string and this is a array list class so array list and type is a string and that means in the array list all the values are allowed only string type and here also we have to specify that so here also a new in the angular brackets we have to specify string okay so we can just specify like this new here you say string in the angular bracket and then specify this okay so this is a way we can create an array list uh, which can have heterogeneous data and if you want to store all kinds of data then you can uh, if you want to store all kinds of data that means heterogeneous data we can just define the array list like this or if you want to store only specific data or specific type of objects or similar type of objects we can go for this definition so this is a way we can declare. So I'll show you practically how we can declare this array list and how we can work with this. And after that, let us try to focus on what are the different methods are provided in the array list. And once we discuss those methods, then I'll show you practically. The first method in the array list. So for example, array list is a group of similar element, right? So, so, so a group of objects. So let us say I have a array list like this. I have a number of elements. That's element 1, element 2, element 3 and so on and every location, every element is located uh, referring by using index concept, right? This is an index concept. Now array list is having different type of uh, methods by which we can perform different operations on the array list. So the first method is, let's say, suppose this is my array list. So in this array list, I want to add a new element. So let's say initially it is an empty array list. I don't have a any objects or any elements inside the array list. This is an empty array list. Suppose I want to add a new object into the array list. So we can use one method called add. And here I can specify the object. Okay, so this particular method will add a new element to the array list. So add is a method. And the same method, suppose here 0, 1, 2, 3, these are the different locations. So when I say only add method, some object, this will go and add here. And if I add a next object, it will go and add here. Next object, next object will go on like this. Suppose I want to add or insert a new object in the middle of this array list. Then I can use the same add method by passing index. So here I can pass index and then object or value. So the same add method we can use in diff two different ways. One is if you want to add an object at the end of the array list, then you can just use add and object or element or value. Or suppose I want to add a new object somewhere in the middle of the array list, then I can use index number, we can specify the index where I want to add object, then specify the object or value. Suppose if I insert a new value some in somewhere in the middle of the array list, what about the rest of the values? So as I said beginning array list preserve the insertion order, right? Same thing will applicable here. Suppose a zero, I have a one here. In the first place, I have inserted a new element. Now what happen is, rest of the element just move to the next location. So here the new element will be added, still the same order will be maintained. So the rest of elements will move forward, but the order is exactly the same. So this is a add method. Add means we can add a new element or new object to the array list, or if you want to insert somewhere in the middle of the array list, we can use index concept, index comma object, add and add with index method. So there are two methods. And there is one more method called Suppose I have some elements like this. I have elements or objects in my array list. So I want to find how many objects or how many elements we have in this array list. So we have one more method called size. So this method 
will return how many objects we have in this array list. So this is size method. So apart from this, we also have one more method. Suppose I have multiple objects or multiple elements in the array list. Suppose I want to remove some object or I want to uh, remove some element from the array list. Then I can use one more method called remove. So then here we have to pass uh, something called index again. So based on the index and whichever the object or element is present in that particular index or location that element or object will be removed. So remove is a one more method we have. And apart from this we also have uh, uh, something called uh, suppose I want to retrieve an object or element from the array list. We can use a get method. Inside this we have to pass a index value. So when I pass index inside the get method that will retrieve the object or the element or value from the array list. So get is a method. Suppose I already have an object or element here. I want to just change it or I want to replace this with a new element or new object. And then I can use one more method called set method. So here again we have to specify the index and which element we have to modify that index we have to specify comma the new object we have to pass or new element we have to pass. Okay, so this will exactly replace the elements uh, inside the array list. So let me just write it here. So get and setters. So there is a method called get and here we have to pass index and there is one more method called set and here we have to pass index along with the object. So get and set. So these are the two more methods we have. And apart from this, we also have uh, one more method called contains. Contains. So this particular method uh, will search some object or element present in the array list or not. So for example, if the array list object is less al dot contains and here we have to pass the object or element. So this will return either true or false. A boolean value will be returned. And whether it will check basically the object or element is present inside the array list or not. So that is a contains method we have. And uh, apart from this, uh, we also have one more method called uh, is empty conditional method. So this will verify basically the uh, array list is empty or it is having some elements. If the array list is completely empty, then it will return yes and or true boolean value will be written. And uh, if the array list uh, have some values, then it will return false is empty. If it is empty, then it returns true. If it is not empty, then it returns false. So this is a is empty method we have. And uh, apart from this, we also have few more methods called add all. So this is a one more method we have. And also we have a remove all. And basically what add all method will do is we can add a group of objects to the array list. So here add method will use to add a single object or single element in the array list. If you want to add a group of elements or group of objects to the array list, we can use add all method. And uh, remove all. If you want to remove a single element or single object from the array list, we can just use a remove method. But if you want to remove the group of elements or group of objects, then we can go for remove all method. So I'll show you all of the methods practically we'll see. And add all and remove all. And these are all methods are implemented as part of array list. Okay. And apart from this, suppose if you want to do some additional operations like uh, uh, sorting searching we have a contains method by the uh, by contains method we can check whether the object or element is present inside the array list or not suppose I want to sort these elements right so we don't have directly sort method in the array list so what we have to do is to sort the elements right so we can use uh, collection class methods initially in the first video probably I told you one thing about collections Collections is a predefined class which is there inside the java.util package itself. The collections is a class which contains some utility methods and by using these methods we can perform certain operations on the array list. Right. So now if you want to do some sorting kind of thing on the array list, so I want to sort all the elements in the array list, then we have to make use of collections class object. So for example, let me just show you. So suppose if you want to sort uh, objects or elements uh, in the collection and one more thing is uh, in the array list if you want to sort uh, uh, all the elements so the prerequisite is all uh, type of elements should be having the same type like if you, if the array list having all the strings or if the array list having all the numbers or similar kind of objects we can apply the sorting. So here to sort this array list for example 
I can use collections class and this is a predefined class It's a collections remember guys I have uh, already discussed about the difference between collection and collections in my first video so here collections is a predefined class in Java dot util package so collections dot there is a method called sort and here we have to pass our array list so when I pass this array list reference variable that will be uh, sort all the objects or elements in the array list so the sort is coming from the collections and apart from this suppose I want to shuffle all the elements in the array list so we also have one more method called collections dot shuffle and here we have to just pass the array list elements so this will shuffle all the elements so these are the two methods sort and shuffle most of the times we do on the array list so these methods are coming from collections class which is present inside the java.util package remember it okay so now we will discuss all the methods along with the sorting shuffling all these things and apart from this we can also do something like uh, suppose I have an array elements normal array I am talking about so let's say I have x y z we have seen what is an array right earlier earlier difference between arrays and array list so I have some elements group of elements in the array now I want to convert that array into array list I can also convert this into array list so I can convert array into array elements into array list also so now we will see all these methods how we can work with these methods sorting shuffling all these things uh, I'll show you now uh, practically now let's move on to the demo session okay so here I have my Eclipse and here I'm just going to create a new project new Java project and here I'll give you name as uh, my project name I'll say Java collections and let's say finish now it is created a new project in my Eclipse so inside this I'm just going to create a new package I'll say collection demos all right so now here I'll create a new class I'll say array list array list I'll say demo one let's take a main method and then say finish all right so now I'm just going to show you how we can work with the array list methods and before that first let us see how to declare an array list object so how many ways we can declare array list object so declare array list so for that what we can do is we need to say array list class let's say array list let's say al this is my just object reference variable new array list so this is a one definition so here when I use array list which we have to import from Java dot util package so all these collection classes are available inside the Java dot util so import this class now this is a first way we can declare array list so al is an object reference variable of the array list and this array list will allow us to store duplicate uh, objects or duplicate elements and also it is accepting heterogeneous data so we can store different type of objects or different type of data type elements suppose I want to store uh, homogeneous data I want to restrict that array list with only homogeneous data then I can specify this like this I'll say array list al equal to new array list and additionally what you have to specify is we have to specify the wrapper class suppose I want to store only numbers into this array list and then I say integer so this is my wrapper class integer wrapper class here and uh, same thing we have to specify here so now this array list will allow us to store only numbers and similarly suppose I want to store uh, only strings in the array list I'll say array list uh, al array list and here I'll say string type in the angular brackets and say al equal to new array list and here also we specify type and then close so these are the different ways we can create array list objects so array list with, with the heterogeneous data and array list with the homogeneous data we can create and there is one more way we can do that so array list is also derived from the list interface so list interface is implemented by array list so we can create a reference variable with interface so list is an interface al equal to here I can say a new array list this is also right notation because list is a parent interface of the array list so we can create a reference variable of list and here we can create an object of array list so this is also character notation 
okay so we can follow any of this depends upon your requirement so for now i'm just using this one so i have created one array list and which contains heterogeneous data i can store heterogeneous data inside this collection inside the array list now so i have created one array list object here then i want to add some objects or some elements into this array list so how to add values to the array list that's the next thing so add a new elements to the array list so how to add a new elements simply say al dot there is a method called add so here we can specify an object or element whatever you want so i'm going to add a different type of data because i have created this array list which will accept uh, heterogeneous type of data so here i'll just say number this is my first element in the array list and then say al dot add and here i store something called string i'll say welcome and after that i'll say al dot add i'll store some decimal number let's say 15.5 and then i'll create al dot i'll add uh, one more type of character let's say i'll add character this is another type of data and al dot uh, add i can also store a boolean value okay so the different type of data we can store in the array list so now i want to print all these elements from the array list so simply what i can do is i can say system dot out dot print ln i'll say al so that is a array list reference variable so this will print all the elements which are present inside the array list now let us try to execute run as java application so this will print all the element from the array list that's it so this is a way we can add a new elements into the array list so currently we have these elements right so i want to find how many elements or objects are present inside this array list so for that what i can do is we can use a method called size so that will give you how many objects are stored in this array list i can say al dot i'll say size so this method will return a number so how many elements we have stored in this array list so that i can print here i'll say system dot out dot print ln i'll say al dot size okay i can store here so i'll say number of elements in array list i say plus so this will print how many number of elements we have in the array list so when i run as a java application this will exactly print five so currently we have a five elements one two three four five so but index will start from zero itself okay so when i counting the index we have to start from zero but this will give you the number of elements one two three four five elements currently we have so this is how we can use the size method and suppose i want to remove some object or some element uh, from this array list so then i can use one more method called remove so how we can use this method is i can simply say al dot remove and here we can pass either uh, index of the element or we can directly pass the element so two ways we can use and suppose i have few elements here it is a zero position 1 2 3 4 so i want to remove a uh, welcome so that is in the first position zero and one so simply i can say one right here here one is index one is a index or suppose i want to directly delete the element without using any index i can simply say al dot remove you can also pass an object so directly you can pass welcome so this will also remove the element so here welcome is element in the array list welcome is a element in the array list so either we can pass an index or we can pass directly a value so let us try to do this so i'm just removing these two so first i'll passing index so this will remove the welcome and then it will remove element both will do the same thing so i'll just comment this second one and let's try to first one so after removing uh, this element will go so rest of the elements i want to print so this message again i'll print here so i can say system dot how dot print ln and here after removing after removing element from array list so here i am printing the array list al okay so here we have removed uh, an element which is present inside the first location so this is zero one so in the first position we have a welcome so that will be removed after that again i am printing the array list 
So when I run as a Java application, so this will paint you new new list. So this is a new list. And even though we have removed that element, still insertion order is preserved. So the other elements are same in the same order, it is preserved. So you can just notice here. Okay. So this is how we can use a remove method. So we have added a new elements, we have removed an element from the array list. Suppose I want to insert a new element. So currently these are the uh, four elements I have in my array list. So when I use add, then it will add a new element at the end of the array list. But I want to add or I want to insert a new element somewhere in the middle of the array list. Then how we can do that? And we can do that. Uh, I'll remove here, I'll put. Okay, so here we can insert a new element by using add method itself, but we have to use along with the index. So still here we have to use add method, insert a new element. So to insert a new element, still we use add method itself, but we use add method along with the index. First we have to pass index, then we have to pass the element or an object. So this is syntax. So previously we have used add method without using index. So that object or element is added at the end of the array list. Now I'm passing index along with the object or element. So how we can do this al dot add, al dot add and index. So for example, currently we have these four values and this is a zero position, first position, second and third. So in the first position, I want to add something else in the first po or second position. Let's say this is zero, one and two. In the second position, currently we have A. So in that position, I want to add a new value. So I'll say two comma, and here I will add a new value called, let us say, uh, I'll add something new, let's say Python. Okay, so this will add a new value in the second position. So after adding, let me just print the list, uh, print the array list once again. I'll say system dot out dot print ln and here I can print after insertion. After insertion, I can get the rest of the list. After insertion, new array list I'm going to print here. Say al, after insertion. Now let us execute and see. So here after removing element, these are the current elements we have in array. Now after insertion, the new value is exactly inserted in the third position. So in which position? Second position. So this is a zero, one and two and rest of the elements still preserved in the array list in the same order. Okay. So this is we can use uh, add method in two different ways. One is we can add a new element at the end of the array list or if you want to add a new element at the middle of the array list, then we can use add method along with the index. So this is a way we can add new elements inside the array list. And suppose for example, I want to retrieve a specific object or specific value from the array list. And then how we can do this. So this is a new list we got here. Now from this array list, I want to get, or I want to retrieve a specific value from this array list. And then what you can do is retrieve a specific uh, element or value or object, whatever. So how we can retrieve is simply I can say al dot get off, you can pass an index. Suppose I want to capture the third, zero, one, two, three, four, and third element I want to capture. So I can just pass three here. So this is zero, one, and two. So second element I want to capture, I'll say two here. So this command, this Patlan method will retrieve the value which is present inside the second position. And once it is returned, we can just print that value by using print. Let's say system dot out dot print ln. I can say al dot get off two. So what the element which will return. So at the exactly in the second position, we have a Python. So which will be written. So this is our expectation. All right. So now let's execute one more time. So now we got the Python is an output. So if you want to extract a specific value from the array list, we can use a get method and along with the two. So here, what is two here? Two is index of element or object. Index of element or object. So that is a get method, set and get. So here's get method we have seen. Along with this get, we also have a set method. Suppose I want to change the existing value. So these are the current list we have. So I want to change some value. So for example, here I have a Python. So I want to replace this with a new value. So how we can do this? Change element, or we can say replace element. So to replace element, we can say error list dot, 
set is a method so here we have to pass two argument one is an index the second part is a, a value new value or new element or new object so where i want to replace this i want to replace with python with a c sharp so for that what i can do is let's find out the index so index is 2 this is a 0 1 and 2 so in the second position whatever value we have i want to replace with a new value so that you can put in the double quotation i'll say c sharp now this command will set a new value in this particular position and python is replaced with the c sharp now let us print uh, the latest list i'll say system dot how dot print ln and here after after replacing element so again i am printing array list here after replacing with a new element so let's execute so this time we got c sharp in place of python we got a c sharp so the new value is the old value is replaced with the new value so this is how we can use a set method to change or replace the object or element from the array list and suppose I want to check. So suppose I have some elements in the my array list. I want to verify a particular object or particular element or value is present inside the array or not. I want to search a value in the array list. So how we can do the search? Searching. So we have a method called contains. So contains is a one method we have. So how we can do this? Al dot al dot contains. This is a method contains. And here we have to specify. Uh, exactly the object or element whatever so i want to check the c sharp is present inside this list or not so here i can just pass that value i'll say c sharp and this will basically return either true or false so this will returns either true or false if the element found uh, returns true if the element not found return false returns either true or false now that return true or false right so let's print that value System dot out dot print ln and just print that value. Okay, so this will contains method will verify or check this value is exist in the array list or not. And if it is exist, returns true. If it is not exist, return false. So now it is returning true here. So that means C sharp is present inside this array list. And suppose let me just put something else. I'll say C plus plus. This is another element let me just as a java application so it is returning false so because that element is not present so this will return either true and this will return false okay so the contains method we can use whether that element is present in the array list or not and apart from this we also have one more method called is empty so this particular method will check our array list is empty or not if it is empty returns true if it is not empty returns false so is empty so currently we have some elements in the array list so when i use al dot is empty this will return false because it is not empty so currently we have some elements so when i run this system dot out dot print ln al dot is empty okay so i'll say is empty so which will return either true or false if uh, our array list is empty then it returns to or else it returns false so currently it is not empty our in, uh, array list is not empty so we are expecting false here so this is how we can check whether the array list is empty or not so these are the common methods we can use along with the array list so now i will show you suppose i want to read uh, all the values from the array list or all the elements or all the objects from the array list then how we can read so there are multiple ways we can retrieve the data or multiple ways we can read the data from the array list and uh, we'll see how we can read those data elements in different ways so here we have a three approaches guys the first approach is by using for loop we can read the data and uh, we by using for each loop also we can read the data for each loop also we can use Apart from this, we also have some other method called iterator method. So this method is available inside the collection array list. So by using this iterator method also, we can read the data. There are multiple approaches we have. Now I'll show you how we can read the data from the array list by using these three approaches. So let us start with the first approach. Using for loop, I want to read the data. So currently how many elements we have? So these are the elements we have in the array list. So I want to read all the elements by using a for loop. So here, I'll just paint something. Let's say system dot 
so reading elements using for loop reading elements using for loop now let us see how we can read the data from the for loop by using for loop so currently we have these elements now let us write one small for loop so here we have to use an index because every element in the array list is representing by using index so let us start index value from 0 and how many elements we have in this array list those many times uh, we need to repeat the loop so how we can find the size of a array list we have a method called size right a l dot size so that will give you how many elements we have in the array list so those many times we have to re uh, repeat the loop and then i plus plus every time i'll increase the index number and now here how to extract that value is a l dot so we have already used a method called get right earlier if i just look at here uh, i shown you one method called get so that particular method uh, will give you the specific value from the array list so the same method we use here a l dot get but here i'll pass i is an index here okay and that will get you the value from the array list a l dot get of i and then i'll print that value i'll say system dot out dot print ln a l dot get of i so that's it so every time the i value will be incremented and until it goes uh, last index and once the elements are done completed then condition become false and then it will stop repeating the loop so get is a method which will get the value by using index so here i is representing the index of the element so how many times this loop repeats uh, this loop will repeat depends upon the number of elements we have in the array list so this is a one way to read all the elements from the array list now let us run this so here if i just look at so these are the so we got something called index out of bound exception. So why you got index out of bound exception? Because we have seen something called i is zero, right? So we have to use less. Okay. So here we are using for each loop to retrieve the data from the array list. Now we'll see how we can do this. So from this array list, we are reading each and individual elements. Okay. And uh, then we have to store those elements in this particular variable called E. So what kind of variable it should be? So it should be able to store all kinds of data. In that case, we have to store this element in the form of object type. So if this variable is object type, which will be able to hold all kinds of data elements, all kinds of objects. Now from this variable, we should be able to extract uh, the element. So this is actually element we have get it from the array list. So directly we can print that. I'll say system dot out dot print ln. I can just print a here. So that is very simple. So from the array list, one by one, all the elements will be stored in this e, and immediately I'm printing here. And in next round, it will extract one more element into i, then again printing here. So this will repeat multiple times, guys. Okay. So till it reaches the last element, it will read uh, it will read all the elements, and then it will stop repeating the loop. So this is a how we can read uh, array list element by using for each loop. So here I'm writing some message system dot out dot print ln and here I can say reading elements using for each loop and then semicolon. All right, now let's execute and see. So run as Java application. So now we got the same result. So reading element by using for each loop. So apart from this, we also have uh, one more method called iterator. So by using iterator method also, we can read the data. So let me just comment this. And uh, now reading elements using iterator method. Iterator method. So how we can do this? So to do this, we have to create a uh, a variable of iterator interface. So here there is an interface called iterator and this is also again parent interface of the collections, collection uh, interface. So iterator and I'll create one variable, let's say id equal to array list uh, variable. So in the array list itself, we have a method called iterator method. So this is a method. So what this method will do is this will automatically read each and every element from the 
error list and store in this particular variable. So iterator we have to import from java.util class itself. And now we have to write a while loop. Let's write a loop. And uh, this particular loop will check in the iterator we captured all the elements from the array list. So here we have to write something called id dot has next method has next. And uh, this particular method will return true if the iterator is having an element. If the iterator is not having element, it will return false. So if it is written true, then we have to extract that element. So for that it dot, there is a method called next, only next. So this particular method will return an object or element from the array list. It will print the element and move to the automatically move to the next element. So if I use this method inside system dot out dot print ln, and this will automatically print that element, immediately it will go to the next element. And again, it will go up and if it is having a next element, condition becomes true and again, it will print the not, not next element. So by using this iterator also, we can read all the data or elements or object from the array list. Now let us execute this. And this particular statement is basically printing the element and it will automatically move to the next element. So then condition will check again. Okay. Now let us execute one more time, run as Java application. So now we got all the values as usual. Okay. So this is how these are the different ways we can read uh, data elements or objects from the array list. So apart from this, uh, there are also some more methods are available like add, we have seen add method. So by which we can add only one element, one object at a time. Suppose I want to add multiple elements or multiple objects at a time. So in that case, we can use add all method. Similarly, we have only remove method, which will able to remove uh, only single object or single element from the array list. Suppose if you want to remove multiple objects or multiple elements at the same time from the array list, then how we can do that. So we have a special methods called add all remove all. Now I'll show you how we can use add all and remove all methods. Now let us move on to the uh, next example. Let me just create one more class. New class array list array list uh, demo two. Let's take a main method and then finish. All right. So here uh, this time I'm just going to create a array list. One more array list. I'll say array list. Okay, array list al equal to new array list. So now I have created one array list uh, variable. Import this array list from java.util and import this. So now al is an array list, empty array list. Now I should add some values into array list. So let me add some values. So this time I'm going to add a homogeneous data so that I'm going to show you how we can sort element and shuffling elements, all these things. Because if you have homogeneous data, that means the same data type elements, so sorting and shuffling is possible. So I'll say al dot, al dot add, and here I'm adding something called x. This is the first element. Similarly, let us try to add a few more elements. I'll say x, here I'll say y, this is a z, and here I'll say a, here I'll say b, and here I'll say c. So now I have added some data into my array list. So now what I'm going to do is, so this is an array list which is already having this particular data, right? Now I want to add these array list elements into some other array list. So I want to add, so this AL is representing one collection which contains a multiple uh, group of elements or multiple objects like X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to do like this. So I have this array list array list which contains some group of elements. This is AL. Now I'll create one more array list, which is let's say duplicate array list. And I want to copy the entire collection into some other array list. So it is possible, right? So if you want to add a group of elements into this array list, here we can use add all method. So by using add all method, we can add one collection, entire collection into array list. So group of elements we can add into array list. So similarly, we can also use remove all. So let me just show you how we can use this. So currently in this array list, we have a group of elements. Now I'm going to add all these elements into some other array list. So I'll create one more array list. So this is my another array list. I'll say AL equal to 
new array list and this is uh, al underscore i'll say duke so some other array list so now i want to add all these elements into this al underscore duke at a time right so how we can do is al underscore duke dot add all this is a method we have to use and here we have to say collection what is the collection here array list is a collection al is my collection so now we are adding all group of elements or a single collection into another array list so this is how we can use add all if you want to add multiple objects into uh, array list then we can use add all and after that let us try to print those elements system dot out dot uh, print ln i'll just print al underscore dupe here and then semicolon and right so let's uh, print this so we have a same element so in the array list whatever elements we have and after adding all the elements into this all underscore dupe and i have printed all the elements you are getting the same elements exactly the same right so this is return these elements so we are able to add a group of elements or a collection into array list similarly if you want to remove all of them from the array list all of them group of elements from the array list then we can use remove all method so for that i'll say al underscore dupe dot remove all <coughs> remove all so from this i want to remove all so what are the elements i want to remove whatever the elements we have in the array list previously we have discussed here we have added all the elements into array list so i want to remove all these elements from this all underscore do because we already added them earlier so this command will remove all the group of objects or group of elements from this uh, al underscore dupe. Okay. And after removing again, I'll try to print them. So here. Okay. After removing. So let me just print something after removing. This is a new array list. So let's execute. Yes. Now it is become empty. So previously, these are the elements we have in this. Uh, al underscore do because we added all the elements group of objects or elements from the al now array list is having these elements now we have removed all the elements from this array list underscore dupe so now i don't have any elements in that so it is completely empty so this is become empty now okay this is how we can use uh, add all remove all add all remove all Okay, so similarly, uh, if you want to sort elements in the array list, or if you want to uh, sort array list in the reverse order, or if you want to shuffle the array list elements, still we can do that. And especially to perform these operations, we don't have a direct methods available in the array list, but we have a certain methods are available in the collections class. So by using those collection class method, we can do that. So if you want to sort, sort an array list, what you have to do is we have uh, a collections class we have a method called sort and if i pass array list as a ob uh, parameter and this will basically sort all the objects or element from the array list so this is external method which we have to use from the collection class and this collections class is also present inside the util package now let us show you i'll show you how we can sort elements from the array list so currently and here I have removed all the element from this particular al underscore dupe, but still this array contains the elements, all these elements. Let us print here system dot out dot print ln. So here I'm printing. So elements, I'll say elements in the array list. Okay, and then say al. So currently, all the elements still there in the array list. So we have removed only from all underscore dupe, not from array list. So if I just print here, so currently we have these elements. Now, currently this is the same order it is maintained, right? So I want to sort these elements from the array list. So I want to sort these elements. So for that, we have to use a special class called collections dot sort of sorry collections dot sort this is a method collection dot sort of and here we have to pass this array list element array list which contains a 
these elements x y z and a b c so currently these elements are not in the sorted order so x y z will or should come after a b c but this is not a sorted order so after sorting this again if i print those elements now we'll see in which order it will print so elements in the array list after sorting after sorting now let us print this now before this these are the element after sorting we got this element a b c and x y z so these are the elements we got after sort after sorting so this is how we can sort element from the array list by using collections dot sort method and suppose i want to sort this element in the reverse order so currently all elements are sorted in the uh, array list like this so i want to reverse uh, i want to sort these elements in the reverse order reverse order so then how we can do is i can say collections dot the same method sort method we have to use same method collection dot sort and here we'll specify the array list if i just say only array list it will sort elements in the ascending order so i want to sort the elements in descending order or in the reverse order so for that we have to uh, pass one more parameter along with the array list i can also use one more method here collections collections uh, dot there is a method called reverse order so collections dot reverse order so this is the additional method we have to pass along with the array list and this will able to sort the array list in the reverse order so after sorting in reverse order again i am printing the array list here so elements in the array list after sorting in reverse order reverse order now we'll see that run as java application now you can see this is a original list uh, after sorting these are the elements we have in the array list then after reversing after reversing these elements we got these elements so z y x c b s a so this is a reverse list so we can also reverse the elements from the array list and finally we'll see how to shuff, shuffling the elements suppose i want to uh, uh, arrange these elements in the sorted order so we can also do the shuffling i'll say shuffling so for that uh, we we have a method called shuffle from the collections itself so from the collections from the collections we have a method called shuffle so by using this method we can shuffle the elements so currently these are the elements we have so i want to shuffle them so for that i can say collections dot shuffle and here we have to pass array list so that will shuffle the elements and after shuffling again i want to print those elements after shuffling so elements in the array list after shuffling after shuffling so now let us execute and see after shuffling in which order this will arrange yes now you can see a c x b y and z so this is a shuffling order so it's a jumble characters are added okay so we have seen how to sort element in the descending order and we have seen how to sort elements in the reverse order and also we have seen how to sort elements in the shuffling order so shuffling means in the random order it will arrange so these are the a uh, sort and shuffle methods which are comes from the collections class and which contains many number of utilities methods we can use those methods to perform some operations on the uh, collection objects okay so this is how we can use uh, we can do sorting and shuffling on array list elements okay and uh, finally i will show you one last thing suppose i have some array elements and i want to convert that array elements into array list so how we can do that let me show you one more example let's create a new class array list demo 2 okay uh, array list demo 3 let's take a main method and then finish and so here i'm just creating one string array i'll say string arr equal to i'm directly adding the values into the string i'll say Uh, some animal names i'm just saying dog okay and i'll say cat and i'll say something called elephant okay so i have part, i have added some uh, strings here some animals as a string so this is my string array so which is having a string array which contains a uh, three elements so this is a string variable if i want to make it as array this is a string array now uh, which contains a uh, three elements 
Now I want to print these array elements. So what I can do is I can just write a simple uh, for each loop. So how we can do this ARR and I want to read each and every value into this variable string. Uh, I'll say value. And here I'll just print system dot out dot print ln. I just print a value here. And this loop will read all the elements from the array list. So when I run this, which will give you all the three elements from the array list. So now, sorry, this is just array. It is not an array list. So now we have defined some variable inside the array and we read all the values from the array. Now I want to convert this array into array list. Okay, I want to convert this array into array list. Then how it is possible? So to convert all these array into array list, we have to create one more array list variable. I'll say array list al equal to new array list. So we have to create array list like this only, right? So array list we have to import from java.util. And uh, this is a normal array list, right? So now what we have to do is here, additionally, we have to use one method called arrays, arrays class. This is also coming from java.util. And here arrays dot, there is a method called as list as a list and here we have to pass whichever array we created earlier that's it okay so now we have converted array into array list object so array is dot as a list of ar so this is the array name and this is a array list object reference variable so this statement will convert array into array list so now let's print this array list so to print this array list i can just directly write like this so system dot out dot if you want to read individual elements you can just write a loop statement or else i can just write uh, system dot out dot print ln al so this will print all the elements in the form of list so now we can see array list is also having the same data so this is how we can just convert this array into array list and then we can use this array list all right so these are all uh, different methods are available in the array list and we have seen how to use all the methods in the array list and which is a, a class which is derived from the list interface and whatever the methods are in the list interface the same methods are available in the array list. So when we need to go for array list if you want to store a duplicate elements in the array list then we can go for uh, if you want to store a duplicate elements. Uh, as a group of uh, entity in a single entity and where the insertion order is preserved, then we can go for array list concept. Okay. So that's all for the array list concept guys. In the next video, we will discuss about one more collection.